we're looking at InfoSwim RDI Analyst, and we're going to show how to use it. First thing first, though, is you need to define a node. And in that node, you have to have the uh, right inflow. So RDII, we have a unit hydrograph and then a sewer shed area. So that's very important. That's the first thing. If you don't do that, then RDI analysts will not work correctly. So now to bring up the, the analyst, you go to applications. If you have the executive suite, click on RDI analyst. And to go through this in sequence, you basically, let's go to open save analysis, since we already have an analysis, and that's saved in the out file folder. So we're gonna click on open one, and that's uh, node 980. All right, and that brings in all the data. You notice it starts in March and ends in June. And the reason the program knows how to do that is because in the in the simulation options, it reads the dates from the simulation options. So that goes from March to June. So that's all the data that was imported. Now, you might wonder how this data got in there. Well, it got in there by importing the data and to see what was imported, there's two different files. We have a flow file and a rainfall file. You don't have to have two files. You can have one file with one column for flow and one column for rainfall. In this particular case, there's, there's two. And they're usually text. You give it a, a junction, 920. I messed up with the 980. But anyway, uh, you have to t say what type of rainfall it is, what the flow interval is and the rainfall interval is, and also where the date where is the date, the fee, the uh, time, and the and the uh, the values? Also a date format, and then the the separator. So, for example, when the flow here is separated by space, but the rainfall is separated by tab. And that's really critical. If you have any data input errors, it's usually due to the fact that it's not the right format. So for this, in this particular case, we, we have tab for rainfall. For flow, we have space. And if you notice that the first column is site, so we're not reading that, we're just reading two, three. We're just reading the, 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 the date, the time, and the flow, and it's one hour, okay? So just make sure that, that that's done correctly. Now to set up the analysis, we basically just can just follow these icons. So we're going to extract the driverless flow. And what it's going to do is it's going to read the rainfall, I mean the flow data, and basically separate out the driverless flow. We're going to basically call half of what is the lower limit here, the uh, groundwater. Click here. So now we have our um, average driverless flow, and we also have a pattern. They have a driver alert flow pattern and driver alert flow. And you can also export that back to InfoSwim so you can get uh, the pattern and the flow. All right, so now we have our pattern. Now we compute the RDI at time series. So basically we'll take the flow data, subtract out the pattern data. And you end up with um, basically your wet weather flow. Okay, then we come down, down to the the next icon and we'll go to calibrate and there's two ways of doing this we can do a genetic algorithm or we can do a run we'll just do an exact run so you can see what it looks like um, go through here And then we get our calibration graph. Now we can do it a little bit more complicated. If we go here and turn this off, it'll do the exact um, uh, genetic algorithm for, based on um, constraints. I like using constraints of 50 and 150 for that. Okay. All right. Also do, let's close this because we want to do that. Oops. Do this again. Run using the exact. And 
And if you notice, it'll do a one-time analysis. So this is actually similar to the EPA SOAP program, where you basically run through the data and just do one time applying the RD, or RTK parameters. Now, if we wanted to look at the um, event graph, we can click here, and it'll show us basically dividing this thing up into different events and how the, the, the rainfall depth versus the RDI depth shows. And, and obviously, the better the fits you have, the more um, data, I mean, the better, better, better the match you have. Okay, we also have under calibrate parameters, we also have options. So if we come down here to options here, turn this off. Do that again. And we go to options. We can give it an initial population, max generation, and mutation. So if we wanted to have more runs, we can we can basically do that. Let's close here. And if we wanted to export the RDII back to InfoSwim, we can go assign RTK parameters, and basically it'll assign those parameters back. Solution, okay. All right, let's, let's stop this, this one here. Let's do exact again. When you run it for real with genetic algorithm, you, you can actually get 10 different um, answers. So now, now that we have something there, we go to assign RDII. There's only one solution because we only ran it one time. We assign that back to InfoSwim and it does the upstreams too. Okay, so that's basically the, the, guts, of, of, the guts of this. And you can also get on the RDI event, you can also get the um, detailed tables for the uh, each event and what's happening there. Okay. So let's pause here. Oh, you can also look at what was, was found here. So you can see the TK is really, really long here. All right. When you're done, save it. Save your analysis, and you can come over here. I thought I already saved. And the data comes over here. Now, you might wonder where this data is saved. Well, it's saved actually in in your um, documents. So if you go to your documents folder, and we come down here to the actual output file, All the data that was used in the RDI analyst is under RDII, and it's under the different um, runs. So here's the actual data that goes into RDI, RDI analyst, but here's the actual run, and we have two different runs. We one and Q2. So let's look at Q1. There's a data file. That data file is the actual. is the actual SWIM5 data file. So that goes into the InfoSwim engine and actually contains the data. Now, what you can do with this is you can actually run this in SWIM5 or import it into ICM if you want to. So if we come over here to SWIM5, and we open that file, all files, bring that in, ignore this, this is a particular InfoSwim stuff that doesn't apply to, to um, Swim 5, and we can basically look at, there's one rain gauge, there's one node, you don't need an alpha because it runs kinematic wave, so if we click here, it shows you what the data is. You click over here to 
do this correctly. Unit hydrographs shows you what the RTK parameters were. And then the time series is basically your inflow. So that's the inflow that you brought in. Looks like that. Very similar what's in RDI Analyst. And then the rainfall looks like this. All right, so, so basically you have a duplication of that. Now, say you wanted to run this in ICM. So we're gonna open up ICM here. And you can just import that as a SWIM5 file. Later. Right. It would have been helpful if I had ICM already open. I have a big uh, database. Yeah. Okay. So that was my mistake. Zoom to network. Let's make a new network. All right. So let's close this, guys. And we'll go over here and make a new. New InfoWorks network. We'll call this RTK. And then we'll import into that the um, RDI analyst data. So we need to find SWIM5. And find it again. Unfortunately, we want to find the DAT file. Okay, so we bring that in, import it. Okay, well, we get a message. That's fine though. Zoom to network. I guess that didn't work. Okay. <laughs> 